All right, welcome everyone tonight to the uh, monthly training. Um, tonight we're going to cover uh, the new hose loads. Uh, we recently adopted these and placed them into service August 1st. So we just want to uh, give a quick brief overview. Uh, we have some videos to cover, some uh, a PowerPoint, and uh, later on in the night we'll go over a, a practical portion. So I introduce myself. I am Eric Strauss, Battalion Chief uh, in the district here and part of the training division. Um, just to go over some updates about the training, uh, we have our six month training calendar here. If everyone could take a look at that and uh, sign up for trainings and also know the um, upcoming topics that we have. Along with that is our six month training resources. And this will give you just a brief overview of what to expect, uh, where the trainings are held at, uh, and what equipment is utilized for that. So take a look, take a look at that, sign up on Target Solutions, and um, we'll see you at the trainings. So here we have our first our PowerPoint. Uh, yes, it is death by PowerPoint. Sorry about that. Um, it's our best way of uh, getting the, the media stuff out. Um, First is our front bumper load, we commonly call it the trash line. This trash line is 100 feet of inch and three quarter. It's used with an Akron, Akron brass fog, flowing 150 GPM at 50 PSI. Uh, for the HEOs out there, we're gonna pump this at 110, 110 PSI. Uh, the hose that we have on this is our trash hose. Uh, due to the high friction loss, we're only using it on the bumper lines. Um, some of the most common Types of uses for this are rubbish fires, trash fires, and grass fires. Uh, please do not use this for structural firefighting due to the high friction loss and the short reach or uh, vehicle fires. And just for a friendly reminder for vehicle fires, we're trying to park at least 75 feet away from the vehicle. All right, here's some other options we have. The, it's a cross lay. Uh, we have three cross lays two inch and three quarters, and one two and a half, with the exception of engine 61. Engine 61 only has two cross lays. So just make note of that if you're ever on that rig. Uh, every cross lay in the district has the same nozzles. So we'll just cover those real quick. Uh, it's 200 feet of inch and three quarter, followed up with an Elkhart Brass Chief XD fog. Uh, one is a fog, one is a smooth bar. These are 160 GPM, pumped at 50 PSI and with a 7 8 tip. Uh, one cross lay has a fog, one cross lay has a smooth bore. The two and a half is an Alcar Brass Chief XD fog. Um, some have fogs if you want to, or some have smooth bores, you can spin them off. This one flows 265 GPM at 50 PSI with an inch and eighth tip. Uh, for cross lay options, we're going to use the inch and three quarter on the residential short stretch, commercial store stretch with incipient fires and vehicle fires. Uh, for the cross lay demonstration, thank you Adam for uh, assisting with that. I um, appreciate your time. Uh, the nozzle firefighter grabs the nozzle and coupling, pulls the hose line to the fire door. Tool firefighter grabs the second coupling and pulls the remainder of hose to the fire door. Uh, it is the firefighter's responsibility to ensure that all the hose is deployed from the, uh, from the box, and the HEO can assist with that if needed. Here's our cross lay demonstration. The nozzle firefighter calls for water, tool firefighter removes any kinks, and nozzle firefighter chases on any kinks. And again, we're looking for the W uh, layout after it's laid out. Here we have a video that we'll play real quick to show you the demonstration. Today we're learning about a new hose load. This new hose load will be used on all district cross lanes. This new flat load style hose load will consist of 200 feet of inch and three quarter hose. Let's begin by laying out our pre-connect tray on the floor. 
Note that we leave with the female coupling, as this will be the end connecting to the pre-connect discharge on the truck. Next, we neatly fold the tail over the tray. You'll want to leave no more than 18 inches, or about a foot. This may differ from truck to truck. After you make the tail, begin flat loading in the first 150 feet of hose. On the side of the lay where you made the tail, leave a gap in the flat load for where a coupling will be folded. On the last fold, just before starting to load the last 50 feet, make a loop on the end big enough to pull with a gloved hand. Opposite the loop you just made, with the last 50 feet of hose already connected, make an approximately 2 foot loop and tuck the last set of couplings into the gap in the flat loaded hose. Finish loading the remaining section of hose into the tray. Make another loop on the end of the load. This is the loop that connects to the nozzle. Attach the nozzle to the end of the hose and lay it on top of the load. Use chalk to label the loops. N for nozzle loop, and C for the coupling loop. This will aid in pulling the hose from the truck on the side opposite of the nozzle. Now you're finally ready to load the tray into the truck. Place the tail on top of the load, slide the tray in, and connect it to the appropriate pre-connect discharge. Now that we've learned how to load the hose, it's time to learn how we'll deploy it. On the side opposite the nozzle, you'll begin by grabbing the two loops you made earlier and pulling them until you're able to grab hold of the nozzle. After grabbing the nozzle, grab the first coupling in your opposite hand and walk away from the truck towards the door of the fire building. The next firefighter, with the tools, brings the next coupling up to the door alongside the first firefighter. Simultaneously, the vehicle operator should be flaking out the rest of the hose load. When deploying from the nozzle side of this load, the process will be identical. This time instead of pulling the nozzle and coupling to yourself using the loops, you'll simply grab them from your side of the tray. All firefighters should ensure the deployed hose line is neatly laid out on the ground and ready to be pulled into the fire building. The nozzle firefighter should notify the operator they're ready for the line to be charged with the appropriate water pressure. The Western Lakes flat loaded crosslay is designed to be easily packed and easily pulled from either side of the truck. When deployed correctly it should result in an organized hose, well laid onto the ground for entry into the fire building. Alright, so just to keep it moving, um, I'm going to skip ahead on that and uh, move into the next one. Uh, just for the record, this is commonly known as the TOSA load. And I do believe, I think, uh, Chief Blair from TOSA uh, helped design this load. 
All right, we're gonna go to the rear hose bed. Uh, this one here is called the reduced line. It's 400 feet of two and a half inch, reduced to 150 feet of inch and three quarter uh, with an Alcar Brass uh, Chief XD smooth bore, flowing 189 gallons per minute at 50 PSI using a 15 16 tip. Uh, the purpose of this load is we can use it for long stretches, courtyards, apartments, uh, schools, uh, you know, the Home Depots, flea farms, stuff like that. Uh, low rise apartments are your one through three floors and some your mid rises four through six. Um, just for, just to know that when we do uh, go to the one through three or five through six, we will be assigning additional companies to help with the advance this hose line as it is uh, a lot of work. Um, the benefit to this load is it gives us options of spinning off the inch and three quarter and going to a more defensive posture or uh, a bigger fire. Uh, with this, we can use a two and a half inch nozzle. This is reduced down to an eighth, inch and an eighth tip at 266 GPM at 50 PSI. And just uh, again, courtyards, long stretches, schools, low rise apartments, uh, some of our rural areas where we can't park the vehicle up close to the, the building, uh, we can use that for long stretches as well. The rear hose bed demonstration, the reduced line, uh, the tool firefighter or officer climbs up and hands the skid load down to the nozzle firefighter. Nozzle firefighter deploys the skid load and two and a half to the front door. Tool, fi tool firefighter and officer pull two and a half couplings to assist in long stretch. Remember when we're pulling the two and a half couplings, we're stacking them um, up next to the front door, all on one side. And here's some more pictures of it. Uh, thank you, Sam. We appreciate you helping uh, demonstrate this for us. And if you notice, there are several methods. The first method is you can pull the loop. That would be 75 feet back. Another method, method is grabbing, skipping the first and grabbing the second third. This is the preferred method as to save time. And again, we're looking for that W when finished. Uh, here is a video that we put together for you. And these videos you can find on Target Solutions, so you can take a look at them anytime if you want. Um, just as a fresh reminder how to pack them and deploy them. The Western Lake skid load is a reduced line hose leg. This load is intended to be used on homes with a long setback, low rise buildings, and medium rise buildings. We'll begin by laying out the first 50 feet of hose in a long horseshoe. Make sure it's folded in half with the couplings lined up on the working end. Lay a six foot roof hook or pipe pole down next to the loop end as a length guide. Leave an approximately one foot long loop at the static end. This will become a handle for pulling the load later. Start flat laying hose on top of the loop line. 50 additional feet will be stacked on each side. Folds should stop at the loop. Lay the additional 50 feet on the other side of the loop toes to get the total 150 feet. Attach an inline valve which will reduce 2 and 1 half inch hose down to the inch and 3 quarter hand line. Attach the valve to the female coupling on the skid load. Attach a nozzle to the male hose coupling. Three seatbelt straps will be used to secure the load. Position them under the layered hose.
bundle is now complete and ready to be loaded in the host bed of the truck. Load the bundle on top of a dead loaded small diameter supply hose and connect it. Let the loop hang slightly over the bed so it can be pulled later for deployment. The skid load can be deployed by either one or two firefighters. The second firefighter should bring forward the first coupling after the bundle. As the line is being laid out, the operator will break off the dead loaded supply line at an appropriate length and connect it to a discharge on the engine. Unclip the three straps. Neatly lay out the two halves of the bundle. Communicate with the operator that you're ready for the supply line to be charged. After neatly unfolding the bundle, the nozzle firefighter will grab the loop and walk out the hose. An alternative method of deployment involves grabbing the second and third folds on each side of the loop. While walking out the hose, the firefighter will drop the second loop on each side, then continue walking out the third loop until fully deployed. purposes we're just going to skip to the end there uh, on the back we also have a five inch water supply line uh, this is primary source of initial water supply uh, also in hydrant areas it may also be used in rural settings with long distance pumping or relay options or relay uh, pumping required next is the three inch water supply line uh, we use this primary source of initial water supply in rural settings uh, commonly known as first due tender, nurses the fire attack engine, or the booster backup. Uh, this is t can be used in the second due engine if tender is not there, not not yet there, or a third due. All right. Um, I just want to say thank you for coming. Uh, here's my email if you want to get a hold of me, and my phone number. Uh, you can text me anytime you want. Um, we also have some. GPRs for this. If you want to uh, work with your crews, the GPR is uh, for the deployment of the reduced line. This gives you criteria in which you should be able to pull this line. And then the other one is uh, deployment of cross lay holes for fire attack. Uh, this time is one minute. Uh, after this course, please take this written evaluation and uh, you know test your knowledge on what you learned today if you want. Uh, you know, it's four, four multiple choice, two true, true false, and some fill in the blanks. And afterwards, we all know we love course evaluations on the instructor. Uh, please give me your honest feedback on how I did and if there's any areas of improvement. Uh, other than that, thank you. Have a great night.